uh, yes, so uh, uh, we sent out the title of this as um, uh, Training for Male Allies, and I thought, well, gosh, doesn't it sound like we're like, throwing biscuits at you or something like that? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's supposed to be a fun thing where, um, you know, you're standing around and, and uh, uh, someone says something really embarrassing or stupid, and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. And so this is, this is supposed to be a fun and amusing sort of thing. Uh, to learn about. So, so let's have some fun. Okay, so there, uh, most of the time, uh, these sort of presentations are geared towards women. Here, as a woman, here's how you can improve your resume. Here's how you can respond to somebody saying success to you. Here's how to succeed in open source, to be, you know, which is basically like be incredibly awesome and kick ass, uh, which is important to do, but it's not, I mean, that's a lot of responsibility to be on. Uh, the five percent of people in open source who are women, um, maybe the ninety-five percent of people <laughs> who are men, we should make some effort uh, in that direction as well. So, yeah, <laughs> just think it's a little more effective. Um, and <laughs> I'm trying to find a really better way to say this than magic and sparkles, but they seem to work out. The reality is that um, as a man, you have extra special powers uh, when it comes to saying things and being heard and convincing people to do things, especially when they're in the realm of success. You pretty, I mean, you automatically get a pass. Um, woman, woman says anything. Happy. <laughs> a man says something about sexism and he's considered brave and often gets applause. So <laughs> I've seen this more than once. In, by the way, every single thing I say in here is based, is based on a real world experience. So at Grace Hopper, a man said something like, happiness and light, and women, of course, are humans, and literally got an ovation. Everyone in the room. That's a really so. low bar. <laughs> 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 so why are you so many of them better than me? <laughs> because I think it's a matter of limboing under the bar. <laughs> um, so I just want to say, you've been, you know, you actually do have an advantage here. There's like uh, the, the shape of your sexual organs does give you power. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Use it. That's what it's there for. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so um, uh, I'm very glad all of you came today and I understand that we're not going to answer all of your questions. So um, we just need to actually, you know, make some get through the role playing part if we try to explain uh, feminism, the basics of it, we're, just, we're not going to get anywhere today. So I totally understand um, if you're interested in more. The best thing you can do is go to this um, wiki page here on um, Geek Feminism Wiki, uh, Resources for Men. This is uh, <laughs> this is a really great list of resources. I'm very did you write it? Or did... uh, I think it was called Made in the Office Job. Have you talk? It starts out with, don't go ask a woman in open source to explain. In an open source, please. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, like really, there's the internet out there. So, and we collected it right there on that web page. Um, the other thing that we're not really going to talk about today is what women can do in response to sexist incidents. Uh, um, that may happen, but uh, it, it was interesting trying to come up with examples and not then think, oh, what should I do? Uh, we're that's. Um, just something we'll talk about some other time. I really want to focus on the idea that it's not women's job to fix sexist behavior. Uh, it, we may happen to be working on it. Uh, in fact, you sort of don't really have a choice. But morally speaking, um, it's, it's everyone's responsibility to work on this. So let's focus on what guys can do today. OK, so role playing. Uh, I, I, I want to again say that <laughs> Every single one of these examples and every single one of the responses, except maybe some of the funny ones, uh, <laughs> I've actually seen uh, in the real world, personally, it's not exaggerated. I'm really sorry. The, at the Grace Hopper conference, what, um, what I, uh, they had some uh, men running through these role playing sessions, things like sitting in a meeting and saying some ideas, Susie says X, Y, Z. Later on, John says, X, Y, Z. <laughs> uh, and everyone's like, great idea, John. Uh, several people thought this is exaggerated. It's not. <laughs> it's just exactly how it is. Um, so there's going to be multiple roles. Not all the roles are going to be the good guy. Uh, uh, 
um, there will be roles for women there. So the format usually is, because this is what a male ally can do, it's either um, a man, a woman, and a male ally, or it's a man and a male ally. Um, some, play, some of them will be multiple. Uh, uh, please don't have long, I'd love to hear your examples and your ideas and like shout out. This is the time that you should shout out your, your, your um, snappy comments, for sure. But uh, don't tell long stories, don't. Um, yeah. If I can't talk that long. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Donna will be our scribe, so. Um, so, uh, yes, and this is, this is, I said this earlier in the beginning of the talk, but I just want to reiterate. Um, uh, I know it's really scary talking about things to do with sexism and <laughs> gender equality and feminism. These are all things, I mean, they're incredibly hard to talk about. Um, and uh, we just, we're going to be nice to you, and if we're not, well, I often promise to be nice and then I leave, but I will apologize. So. <laughs> but nobody will think that you hold the opinion you have just expressed. So, uh, so yeah, uh, this is, I'm going to be reloading the wiki um, as Donna types and stuff. We've already got most of these things in here. Uh, I've got some sample responses in here. I've actually got a couple of questions that I don't have a good response for, so um, those will be. Okay, and I want to know. Um, that if you like the work that we're doing here, this is only possible because I don't have a job. Um, and I would love to have a job doing this. So would Mary Gardner, so please come speak to us. All right. Cool. All right, so this, this is a, I need examples for this one. A woman walks up to your group at a conference, so I need a group. <laughs> Is it an old neighbor? Yeah. Um, uh, you can do one with Yeah. Okay, this is good. Thank you. I'm sorry. It can be kind of anti Elizabethan and have women play the role. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we can totally do a reverse role play. Yeah. The messages may not be clear. Ah. <laughs> if we had, if we had um, perfect clothing. I actually thought about that because if you're if you're a man, you walk like that. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Good. So, 
How do you like the partners program? <laughs> <laughs> Someone is talking about what you personally want, that men want this. That's the point where you can say, actually, 
I'm a man, and I don't want boob babes. They make me feel weird. So, okay. So, you, so just yeah. very quickly, you just totally agree with that. Um, at a technical uh, presentation thing a few years ago, um, our company had boob babes, but they were actually dressed properly. Uh, with probably like tops and jeans on, and we had men come up to us and say, great, this is lovely, it's really nice to see girls who uh, look good and who are intelligent, who are trained in what they were talking to people about, they weren't just standing there scantily clad, giving out air fresheners and stuff. We actually got a lot of really good response for that. Yeah, yeah. so, great, so we're gonna... I must have booth eggs. <laughs> I don't like booth babes. <laughs> <laughs> booth babes are vital to my business. Actually, it makes me less likely to want to buy from you. You look like a food bag to me, Randall. <laughs> quite a lot of comments about the topless women with marketing slogans spray painted on their breasts. Oh, 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 oh. And they are not going to do that again. That's <laughs> <what it is. laughs> so if you had a female employee and she's wearing, I don't know, a skirt, we're actually going to be able to tell whether or not she's a big babe. So it's cool, you can invite your sisters. You know, There's a ridiculous amount of scare tactics going on with that. Okay, do to do, do, morning graphic presentation. <laughs> so I decided to make this slightly more complex. Um, yeah. uh, uh, the show graphics, like. Okay, so uh, we may have gotten to the point now where we sort of know how to handle a, a pornographic presentation. I just want to point out that there's now this trend towards asking your permission before doing the pornographic presentation. Yeah. That should not change anything. Like, well, yeah. Oh, sorry. Let me see. Do you want permission to show? I had read uh, the you know, process where the Hang Arcade Expo, which was one of the largest, now one of the largest technology expos and gaming expos in North America, um, they actually had 75% of all people um, at the conference said they did not want food players. Wow, which conference was that? Uh, PAX. 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 So this is sort of the feeling I get, is, so especially there's some, still some Vegas conferences especially that have a lot of this sort of thing going on. And what I find is, is often there's this like se separate group of marketing people sitting over here who are like, let me imagine what programmers like. I know, a live goat. I'm not making that up either, that's real. <laughs> right? 
And only if we get to sacrifice. Does <laughs> <laughs> anybody sketch the termination? To be strong. Exactly. It's probably worth noting, because I think it's already been mentioned a few times, um, and making me a little uneasy, but it's important not to make fun of other people in order to make a point about sexism. So particularly making fun of trans people uh, or making fun of gay people is not cool in order to make, in order to like, um, you know, so something like, um, you know, who? Yeah. Yeah, you're just, 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 uh, yeah. yeah, so don't sort of equate, you know, like, know, um, so something along the lines that people often do with being gay in this situation is something along the lines of, um, you know, imagine, you know, imagine if you were a gay guy, and that would be uncool, right? Yeah. Um, well, yes. don't be uncool like a gay man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you've got to be, you've got to be a little bit careful around making cracks about sure. men dressed as women or men who have sex with men, or women who have sex with women. I think Cat's kind of was in reference to yeah. someone who actually is attracted to transvestites. Yeah. So, I mean, and really that is bringing out the, uh, you know, the, the, that's, that's trying to bring the absurdity out. Like, okay, if we are talking about this, we need to talk about, you know, I'm just trying to get your face, you know. Uh, yeah. I think it's, re it's a really important point, I totally agree with Mary. I mean, some of the most amusing conversations on this topic I've had with Arthur Miller, who as many of you know, is quite um, proudly out in campus. <laughs> we have the most inappropriate conversations, and our other male friends get really quite upset with us. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I think it's really important that we don't um, we don't diminish the role of sexuality in this debate because it's actually part of it. A lot of it tends to get very kind of sterile and oh, sexism is bad, we can't possibly talk about sex ever because, you know, it's going to be less talking practice. about sex is an advanced skill and probably not what you should practice at this conference. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I won't agree with that, but we just have to, like, yeah. yeah. It's just like, um, it's going to be um, imbalanced, right? And so, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to try to, yeah. It's a little advanced. Yeah. I think that's feminism grad students. I guess it's the basic point is, don't use fear of being gay or right. fear of dressing as a woman I have a great example. As, a, as a way to shame a man. Yeah. Don't be like, oh, that was a gay thing to say, or you might as well be a girl because that's really bad. Then yes. you just shame on other people. Yeah. Oh, I, have a, I have a pretty good example that purely Robert gave me to Scott. Um, someone said, well, you know, it, she, she said, hey, you know, maybe I, in reference to the uh, enhanced pat downs in the US, oh, uh, oh, yeah. you know, go, go there and pretend that you're enjoying it, right? She's like, yeah, I'll do it. And someone said, well, why didn't you do that? She said, well, I would still be sexually harassing the TSA agents, and that's just not the right thing to do. It's a joke, but you can't use the, those tactics, the same tactics of your enemies uh, on your side. It's sort of like, I don't know, it's one of the issues I have with martial arts, maybe it's like, well, it's great that the good guy happens to be better at martial arts, but it's still not a way to say more right? Okay, we, really, we do really need to move on, I think, on this one. But. Um, we will probably have time. When's the last, the end of it? 5.30. Uh, 5.30? Yeah, oh, great. Okay. Well, we'll move on and we'll come back. So. <laughs> so for, for this one, what you're going to get is a great amount of apathy and silence. So the, the one... No. Uh, do, uh, do you want to volunteer? Please. <laughs> 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 okay, we'll have it. Okay. <laughs> I was going to suggest a comeback, but let's do it first. Okay, well, you can do your own comeback. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, uh, um, there could be a friend of the last winter. This is a non speaking part. Would you like it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, would you like to go? Sure. Alright, this is also a non speaking part. Alright. Mm. This is a white hat part. What? Who wants to be a white hat? <laughs> this is a comical part. It requires like this No, she's not the other thing. It requires someone with physical comedy skills. So, 
So this is by law, is it? <laughs> oh, and I want to say this is also a real situation. So they told him that you can't show pornography. <laughs> and so he said, show of hands, who wants to see pornography? And a lot, or didn't want to, will be uncomfortable with seeing pornography. Oh. Several people raised their hands, including Mary and Melissa Draper. And uh, uh, so he was like, oh, well, I'll skip the slide, but you know how PostScript works. And it was, couldn't skip the slide without rendering it, and it was very graphics heavy. So basically, there's a slow motion pornography <laughs> drawn out. Yeah, so. <laughs> but we, we had some practice with earlier versions of this, so I'll let Mary tell us right now. Okay. Hey, I have this great pornography presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Porn! <laughs> Naked pictures! Would that make this presentation any better? Who thinks? <laughs> that's the same question, sadly. Oh, no. I mean, that's not my point. I'm just responding to the comeback. harassment at conferences and what to do, a number of people said the solution was to just beat him up or tase him or run him and beat him in the groin. And uh, Mary, Mary wrote a great uh, article about this in which, and I, I saw this vision of Mark Shuttleworth standing on stage saying something stupid and a line of women just running <laughs> So the minimum you can do is walk out. If you're an organizer, you can say something. You can raise your hand and say, I don't think this is appropriate. Yes? Um, as an organizer of a mini -con, I'm totally paranoid that someone will do this, and we have to jump up and turn off their screen and all this oh, sort of right. thing. Even, and we warn people to this. <laughs> yeah. Totally paranoid. Um, well, apparently it's just that. It's just people on the live committee. It's just the fact. Yeah, so I, mean, I was there that night. It wasn't an organizer. It was like a night. But I think one thing worth doing is, yes, walk out, but if you know the organisers, they're not necessarily going to that quite team, they could be on the other side of the room. So actually go and grab them and say, hey, this has just happened, you need to do something. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> Jeff. Say that again, John. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, so, tell the organiser, walk out and tell the organiser. It's something I'm going to deal with, because I'm part of the, uh, the conference organising team. The next year, but it's a very informal, very anti-authoritarian, Yes. Uh, conference, and if you go, there will be no boobs. Everyone will just go, oh my god, well, citizenship. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Okay. You'd be surprised how many people are going to agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, this. Yeah, the, it's more that because the way the conference is pitched, coming down, looking like a, but it'll obviously come down to look like a school feature, it, it, it's not going to fly. Can, so that's can the you thing do like though. a survey or something? Like survey the audience and of your conference oh. and say, how many people would be well, offended kind of by and make it more democratic? But that's yeah. the entire point of this but exercise. It's not a democratic affair. Three yeah. people objected, 90 said okay. That doesn't say okay. They did it. They well, failed to say it. It's, it's, it's not about. Yeah. I'm trying to think of some way to pitch it. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that later. There's been, um, in, in response to the, the recent Arizona issue. Good one. Yeah, I have a sensitive topic for Val, especially. Um, but at least one of the politicians has come out with a um, response of freedom of speech is not freedom from consequence, and that's primarily the way you've got to get it across. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, it, so, okay, I just want to say that DEFCON 
is a conference that I'm not going to try to enforce no porn pornography. Yeah. So perhaps your conference is not an option. But what I have discovered with this is that the tide of public opinion has turned, if yeah. it was ever mm -hmm. on the other side anyway. Yeah, just nobody to get, wants to, yeah. This way, it's silent people, maybe you can say something. Well, I, I well and this, we're getting practice. Yeah. Just block that. You don't even have to say anything. So. I guess really what you do is just say the question, and, and how can you quantify pornography being a valid part of an IT presentation? Uh, not, I don't see business. how it can be. Yeah, well, you know, okay, and that's not, that's not an argument either because there are people who. I had a comment from somebody saying, oh, well, you know, pornography was an important part of my blah, 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 right? How? I think the, the, the point about the concept of the, the point that you just made about the freedom of speech is not necessarily freedom from consequences. Um, a lot of us are in positions where we can choose to onboard people into our organisations or get them involved in projects. This can be one way that you could say, okay, well, I remember you. You put up that picture that I objected to. I don't know that I really want to get you involved in the kinds of projects and organisations Basically, that I have. So it's a small community yeah. and we can use that. If, if, if people do have power, you're not used to exerting that power. It's not usually necessary. This is an opportunity for you to set the standard. Um, it's it's your party you get to decide. So, uh, la, la, la. Rusty had something to say. Oh, I went to an excellent presentation once on porn surfing. Porn site. One of the early presentations about 10 years ago was on commercial internet, and it was all you know. And he managed to do the entire talk without any, without any graphic right. images. I know exactly the talk you're talking about, yeah. and it was one of the more fascinating talks about was this, that. You know, so he stuff. actually, if anyone had to pause, he did. He managed to do the talk about it. Yeah, that one went to Yeah, that's in that one. Sorry, I was just thinking about what Joe was saying about. Um, having to deal with highly anti-authoritarian people. And one thing might be simply acknowledging to them, you, I'm sorry, I, I can't control what you put in your slides, but if you put something like that in your slides, you can guarantee that you'll never be invited back and we'll never want you at this show again, at this conference again. Actually, yeah, it's the kind of con where you can just squirt people or something, yeah. throw a bucket of water on them. A bullet of stupidity. But, but yeah, I mean, yeah, freedom from consequences, you can't, you, you can't stop them from doing it in real sense. But you can say, if this happens, you won't be back. You'll never be back. The only thing I say there is, don't say never. Because people are stupid and young and they make mistakes, so you know, say yeah. you won't be back. There's always a capacity for, forget, for forgiveness. Yeah, but, exactly. you, but if you explain in that, in those terms, what, what yeah. the consequences And there's are. excellent instructions for how to do a real apology on the geek feminism uh, page. <laughs> and uh, they're, you know, it's... The other thing I would say as an organizer is that you don't always have to lay down at all. No. If you simply say to people, don't be jerks. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people will listen to that better than our rules are. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Don't put anything up your um, mind about so, that racist so. <laughs> I find this ironic saying this too, but uh, <laughs> a lot of people don't know what the rules are. Like the pornography thing, most of the time, people who put pornography in their presentations, have, they have no idea that it's not okay. You know, they might think it's a little racy, a little interesting. You have to communicate this specifically. So, I'm sort of, you've been really patient, can I end the talk? I just wanted to ask you a question. Sure. Sure. How prevalent is this really? I, I can't remember the last time I actually saw something of that class in a group. Yeah, clearly, I, I was unaware of Randall's posting about the boot waves either, but I don't know why I would ever listen to Randall, going. so. <laughs> <laughs> There's a web page that you can check out. Uh, also, Kat has some great stories for you. Okay. <laughs> you January 2011 is the most recent one. <laughs> 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 and you've been even more patient. I, I, I guess I'm thinking of that fear if you're running a conference or you're running a, a mini conference um, of having to deal with someone going, yeah, my next slide, and everyone going, and you go and frantically scramble to, to get it. How, is there, and apart from, right, I think the best way that I've seen so far is just to say for the conference, we have this policy, and it doesn't allow for these things. Uh, it's, are there any other ways that this is dealt with? Well, uh, uh, other than pure So spreading. So uh, other than changing the culture as a whole, which we're doing, each of us by having this discussion and setting the, the policies, 
you you have to say you can't do this and respond to it when it happens. I mean, part of the deal is is when something like this happens, you need to respond to the conference and say what your opinion of it is. You can't just let it slide. That that contravenes uh, that contravenes our policy. So no, thanks for asking. Yeah. yeah. Um, on this one, uh, OSDC did the um, harassment, we were put the harassment policy in place, and I was a part of making sure that happened. And Lana did a fantastic talk on technical writing and had um, a bodybuilder, a semi naked man, in her talk. And whilst it was a part joke, it was also part, well, we put this policy in place, and that's why it was inappropriate. It wasn't so inappropriate, I felt I needed to stop Lana from speaking now and stop the talk. But afterwards, I did sort of go, no, yeah, no, it's kind of funny. And I spoke to Peter about it, and he said, yeah, I felt uncomfortable. Not because, not necessarily by the slide itself, but by the fact that we've actually said this isn't OK, and now we have to do something about it. Yeah. And so I spoke to Lana, and I think she has seen the error. Of the well, I have, <laughs> indeed. The slide has been well and truly removed. This actually <laughs> brings me back to uh, one of Donna's quotes. Uh, uh, we don't want dominion over men, we want dominion over ourselves. Um, and so turning, and, and the same thing that Mary said is that we can't um, use the same tactics in reverse. So no pictures of naked men. <laughs> um, I think you had a question, Jason. Yes, um, I don't understand the lots of uh, bringing open the software conferences, so I'm wondering how good speakers are in general and um, the text papers in in gender neutral language. Mm -hmm. That's something about which feminism has done a great deal of awareness raising over the years. And I know from uh, university context where people are writing uh, scholarly or um, mm -hmm. academic papers that if you are uh, gender biased in your examples or in your uh, use of language of masculine pronouns, for example, that's going to be noticed. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, so um, uh, just this question was about uh, uh, how careful people are about using gender pronouns in uh, technical talks and papers. Um, so I, I have a pretty simple rule, which is that, that if you use female pronouns for um, technical examples, uh, you will have shifted the ratio of male to female uh, pronouns from, you know, like, 99% to 1 to 98% to 1, possibly or 2. <laughs> um, I, I recommend just using female pronouns. Just go for it, change the world. In like 20 years, you can look back and someone can say to you that you're being um, uh, uh, biasing your, your readership. But you know, give it a try. Otherwise, uh, the um, using the plural, they, that sort of thing, has become standard English. Or you can alternate. It's not all that hard for me. Yes? I think what you intended to say was obvious, but um, we're talking about females being the technical. Being the, uh, technical, yeah. the personal technical expertise, well, as opposed to technical examples where the clueless person is the female, which we get a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just go for the reverse of the usual. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'll be changing the world. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Mm. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's go with the next. Okay, I need um, four people. <laughs>
Yeah. All right, so this is taking place on an IRC channel, so you're going to have to interpolate a little bit. Who's on the IRC channel? Where it has left the room. Who joins channel? Cake. Where it has joined the room. Send us pics. <laughs> ASL. ASL. <laughs> um, if this is where you're picking up women, you need more help than I can give you. <laughs> Make sure it's a good photo. Does that kick? I'll let you, yeah, Ben, so there's a reason. It is absolutely the case that if you have a, a women in open source feminist related channel at all, you actually constantly, you get to know how K lines work. <laughs> I have no desire to know these things, and I know these things. It's just, um, so one of the, uh, uh, be friendly to this on your server uh, and take it seriously. Thank you. Thank you. We have two more, and the last one is one I don't have an answer to. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Uh, tell you what, tell you this right now, and then you can come back. Um, da, 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 da. Okay. So, hi, I'm Valerie. I'm a Linux kernel developer. Really? <laughs> what did you write? <laughs> this comes in, in various forms of, of, and this is very different from. Oh, so what do you work on? Right? That's like a, a friendly, let's make conversation sort of thing. That I totally get this, well, what did you write? Sort of thing. And I'm like, oh my god, how many things have I been a maintainer of? <laughs> but it happens constantly. Um, I don't have an answer for that, and this isn't a workshop for me to give an answer. But if you can imagine standing there and watching this happen. Um, and uh, one of the not helpful answers, I don't think, is here's a, a web page which has a list of all her patches. That's not, nobody should have to prove, it's like showing your papers, right? You know, you, you, you should not have to have this discussion at all. Um, do you want to save it for when we do the thing? Because if, if you have a great answer, then you can write it in. <laughs> okay, different scenario. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, one last one. This is it. This is your last opportunity to appear on video wearing the evil hat. <laughs> Pia! Yes? Would you like to play? <laughs> Do you want to be Evil Hat? I'll be Evil Hat. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm good. <laughs> Would you like to be. No. Would you like to be. Okay, so I might You're already done. Are you good? Sorry, sort of people. Apparently. Let's make it turn this into violence. Like proper violence. <laughs> 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 So you can make fun, what you're trying to do is you're trying to draw attention to um, 
uh, the fact that we're talking about people's appearance. You know, someone who's usually like, eh, 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 eh. you know, when you turn that around on them and, and show, oh, hey, we're judging you based on your sexual attractiveness or, or physical beauty. Right, so, but I don't think any of these is a really awesome answer. So, do you have a really awesome answer? And then, and then you get to go. I don't particularly have an awesome answer, but I do think leaving is actually you have succeeded all your control of that conversation mm -hmm. and you have, have said okay it's okay for you to come to, to talk about that i'm going to i'm going to go away and register my complaint but who cares so you know? I, I do want to speak about that a little bit um one of the things <laughs> you get to use to i won't get to no, 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 do it like for team you go no no <laughs> <laughs> uh, so part of the reason so if you take a table full of 10 women in open source, nine of them will be burned out about talking about women in open source. Um, it's a constant, constant, constant battle and struggle. Um, each of you, the, the, the key to, to doing this and not getting angry at the world and putting open source is to not fight every single battle. And in fact, don't even fight battles. Stay, if you're in a situation where you don't control things, state that you don't like it. Leave. Don't have an argument. Don't try to convince them. Don't feel like it's your duty to change the world. When you have the right opportunity, take it. And this is just about showing you the opportunities and giving you practice to them. One of the things I suggest people do is that you you practice a phrase that you're happy with that to handle situations like this. Just like, I don't think that's very polite. Um, you will find that you're generally not going to get mocked for this if you're a man. You know, I, I think that's kind of rude. End of story, right? And if you just practice that and you have it and it's your automatic response, I mean, that's part of the thing with the, uh, the pornographic presentations is we all know now, hey, it's possible somebody might do a pornographic presentation. And when that happens, what I should do is I should get up and walk out of the room and tell an argument. We didn't know that the first time, <laughs> a few times it happened. Now we have that, uh, that, that knowledge. Um, what it just came to mind, I mean, a guy in this sort of conversation, oh, she's pretty or she's deadly. Uh, wouldn't say something like she's really good at what she does. That immediately takes things away from what she looks like to what she does. Oh, that but that requires knowledge. Oh yeah, because then what she do? Yeah. Anyway, go. Okay, a name which is not a name which is Mary. 
It's actually probably the uh, yeah. the, uh, the Labour body that has a language in it. But people are going to have the instant virtual sure. visual of who this person is. So mm -hmm. it will help. So I don't have um, I was going to, just going back to the, the isn't she hot or whatever. I, I don't have the magic blood sparkles, but I am an honorary guy in certain circles. Um, and so I'm really <laughs> different in this conversation. Um, and I find that, that a response that seems to work is, I'm sorry, I thought we were in a Linux conference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah, just in general. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, is this a beauty pageant? Yeah, what a creative. <laughs> I thought I was a Linux conference. Yeah, yeah, this totally happens with women present, so it's certainly mm -hmm. possible. You have a comment. Yeah, um, this is sort of a, a, an observation what you were saying about choosing your battles. Mm -hmm. And I was saying that um, you don't just have to choose whether or not to raise an objection. Um, if you raise an objection, that can be from a personal point of view, like that makes me feel uncomfortable, or that person's my friend, and I don't like what you said about them. You, you can just leave with your, like, you can vote with your feet and just leave, and that can be seen as a personal objection. Um, but the other thing, the alternative is present if you choose to speak up, is trying to speak from a point of authority. And depending on the context, that could get you vilified. Like if you say, um, you know, please don't speak about women like that, then you're, you're speaking from a voice of authority, not just speaking from your own personal opinion. Um, What's advice on, on choosing whether or not to invoke authority? So the question is, when do you say, um, uh, when are you coming from a, a position of personal preference? You know, I don't like that. Versus when you when you're coming from trying to make a statement in general that sounds authoritarian. Uh, that is not okay. Um, and I think the answer is uh, when you have power, you should use the that is not okay. And when the only power you have is your participation, you should use um, uh, I don't like that. Yeah, that exactly gets used against women because women will be like, hey, that's not cool. And someone will be like, oh, I have a sister and she's fine with that. So oh, no, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one woman oh, speaks yeah. for all women, only the one I agree with, though. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so that's why it's so great to have magic man's purpose. Exactly. Because you can say, I don't like that, and they won't be like, oh, well, some other man told me he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> That usually is kind of like pointing out that like women are people too. It's like they have independent thought. <laughs> just like some really obvious, like no. start their minds of their own. <laughs> different ones think different things. <laughs> there are definitely days when I yearn for the feminist orgy, and so I just want to say that I'm not a feminist. But uh, <laughs> overall, I'll go with not. Okay, so we're we're totally like two minutes past our time. So um, I want to thank you all for being really, 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 really good sports and ex excellent actors and actresses. And uh, um, uh, please refer back to this webpage if at all possible. And this allies training is here on the interwebs um, on the Geek Feminism Wikia and there's our wiki and there, there's tons of great stuff on there. So if you have any more interest, please check that. Thank you.